how can one of the top players in the world lose in just 21 moves? Well, this is how. My play of the day from round three of the FIDE Grand Prix in London is the game between Shahriya Mamadyarov and Anish Giri. Mamadyarov had the white pieces and he began with d4. It's a very orthodox opening, a Slav. And here, instead of knight c3 or e3, Mamadyarov plays the move queen b3. Well, this has been seen many times before, but perhaps not one of the main lines. And I think that was pretty good strategy against Giri. As we'll see, I think his inexperience shows here. Okay, e6, good solid move. Bishop g5. And now h6, okay, this is all very regular, and the bishop comes back to h4. And now, if black wanted to play very solidly here, you could play, for example, bishop e7, and then we have a position which is basically just a queen's gambit declined, where, well, you could say that white has a very slight advantage here, but this is a very solid position for black, and has a reasonable reputation. But Geary played much more sharply. He took on c4, giving away the centre. Now, if you're going to play like this, you really need to be absolutely sure what you're doing. And, well, as we'll see, perhaps Geary wasn't best prepared. OK, he played b5. Of course, this is a very ambitious way for black to play. You give up the centre, but what you do is you're going to hope that you can break back with c5 that will unleash the bishop, perhaps unleash the rook down the c file as well, and perhaps the bishop can come out c5 with, with play down here. Well, as you can see, there's a lot going on if black gets in the move c5. So white either has to fight to prevent black playing this move or find counterplay elsewhere. But obviously this is a very sharp way to play because you're giving white the center. And if you don't achieve this break successfully, then you can be in trouble. I think if you play like this with black, you need to know exactly what you're doing. Otherwise there can be trouble. And here, Giri played rook c8. Now, of course, this looks like a very normal move indeed. But, well, with hindsight, perhaps queen b6 is a better way to play this position. Now, the idea is, well, first of all, you get your queen away from this pin. Sometimes you have the option to castle queenside. Of course, you're, you still want to break with c5, but it can be, <coughs> excuse me, it can be very useful to still have that option to castle queenside. Just one moment, I'm just going to have a little uh, slurp of tea to uh, just give my throat a little break. Thank you. But he played rook c8. And bishop e2. Okay, of course, if white tries to win a piece with e5, then g5 comes and you save the piece. And the knight can sit very nicely indeed on d5. So, okay, bishop e2. And Giri broke with, uh, excuse me, he played uh, a6 here. But if black breaks with c5 straight, straight away, d5 is the response, and this is extremely dangerous, as we'll see something rather similar in the game. Let me just take you through a previous game to show you the dangers here for black. Okay, e5, so g5, you have to play this to save the piece. Bishop comes back, and now the knight has to move, so knight e4. Now, this looks, at first glance, very attractive for black, but, well, white can take on b5. And in this game, actually, white won very, very quickly. You can see this is already extremely nasty. And because black's king is still in the centre, there there's trouble here. 
So that's just a little illustration of what can go on. Okay, a6 was played by Geary in the game. Okay, understandable given that previous uh, example. White castles. And now c5 from black. Now, I'm sure that Geary appreciated that c5 is a risky move. So why did he play it so quickly? Well, let's just see what happens if he plays a normal move like c5 and then try, uh, like bishop e7, and then only then tries to get the c5 break in. Well, then white is going to advance, and in this position you can clearly see that white is beginning to take control. This knight would like to hop into d6. It might go to c5 to clamp down on this c5 break permanently, and then the bishop is in trouble on b7, it just really blocks in. So I'm sure that Geary appreciated the kind of difficulty that we, he would have in this kind of position, and that's why he was eager to play this very risky move, but a very dynamic move as well. You know, if white takes here, then this can solve all black's problems. Suddenly we've got play against the queen, the bishops look fantastic. Very double-edged position still, but black should be doing very well. So c5 played, and d5 was the response. An excellent move. So you can see now that this pawn just blocks all black's pieces. OK, really, black has to take this pawn, otherwise white will take on d6. And now e5, this is the point. Okay, to save the piece, black must play g5. This is very much as we saw in the previous variation. The bishop drops back. Incidentally, if you take on f6, which also looks very dangerous, then in fact, black is okay here. I mean, this looks potentially perilous for black's king, but you actually can take on f6. And then the king hides here in the middle of the board, and suddenly you can see that black could be getting a very dangerous counterattack on the king. So that's not the right way to play it. Mamadiarov just dropped back the bishop to g3. And now knight e4 was played. If knight h5, this is the key move in so many variations here. e6, and of course if pawn takes, then the queen swoops to g6. So knight e4 was played, but this was just exchanged off and the knight dropped back to d2. And already, I think, black is, is could be lost in this position. I'm not sure there's re really a, a good way out here. White simply threatens to take on e4, and black's king is, is very poorly placed in the middle, but the problem is it doesn't really get much more security on the king side. For example, bishop g7, knight takes e4, and if castles, then knight d6, well this is absolutely horrendous, rook d1 and because of all the pins here and a possible threat to play queen f5 and bishop d3 and mate on h7 I think black is just lost there. So let me just go back to, instead of bishop g7 Giri improvised here, he played h5 but this is just not good enough. Knight e4 was played. If bishop takes e4, trying to win a piece here, then again this move e6 just detonates black's position. He is utterly lost here. Simple moves. You can see that black's development is awful. If pawn takes, then this doesn't help the situation at all. White is completely winning here. But it, it's a dreadful position. Um, you could take here, but yeah, no, basically nothing's doing. Uh, rooks, rooks are come in the middle. Sorry, let's just look at this one. If if h4 again, e6 is the move, um, and it, this is a, a terrible, terrible position. If, for instance, here we can t check on d6 and queen g6, queen g7, it's awful. OK, so again, Giri improvised, he played rook h6, it doesn't really help. Rook d1, simple moves, just pinning on the d-file. Bishop e7 played, 
and now a lovely winning move bishop takes h5 not too difficult really so now things get even worse the king can't castle Giri took the bishop and now after e6 he resigned why did he resign? well pawn takes pawn will be met by knight d6 check if bishop takes d6, queen g6 is followed by bishop takes bishop, it's utterly killing. And if king f8, again queen g6 is the end of the world. Um, apart from taking on e6, I suppose, well, I mean, this, this is absolutely hopeless. It's, it's just, just a dreadful position. Um, completely lost. You can see that black is just split in two here. So that's how one of the top players in the world can lose in just 21 moves. I have no doubt that Anish Giri will, in a couple of years time, be one of the strongest players in the world. But I think his inexperience was revealed today. We also have to remember that Giri is still full-time at school and apparently has had uh, serious exams this year he's been studying very hard so that's not easy to be playing at elite level when you have those other commitments but I think his choice of opening here was really to blame and if you're going to play something as sharp as this you really have to know it backwards particularly against such a sharp and aggressive player as Mamadiarov who was really in his element today Thanks for watching.